All right, let's talk about the Detroit Lions finding a way they will play for the George Hallis Trophy. They have won multiple home playoff games. Now to go to San Francisco. No easy place to play, but you know Green Bay just showed you it's possible. They're human, right? Even if San Francisco eventually won, that should be an awesome game. Uh, a weird game offensively for the Lions. I definitely thought Tampa Bay came out firing at times, uh, and you know there was only so much Detroit could do uh, early on, but they found adjustments and were able to eventually pull out this victory. So let's just talk about the good and the bad here for Detroit, but ultimately the good as they win in advance. We can start off with this play, which was a bad play by Goff, no getting around it. I mean, you have a one-on-one -on -one matchup here. It's, again, on paper, I actually totally agree with why this would be the read that you look towards. You know, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown against Jamel Dean, who's a good cover corner, but still, a lot of traffic. This, these are the kind of routes that Amon Ross St. Brown has been elite at this season. So, I mean, looking here on a second down and goal, to me, it makes a ton of sense. However, Goff's going to run this play action. He looks up, and, and again, I'm going to be honest, you can kind of see why he wants to make this throw, why he's considering doing this, and you can maybe argue this is even the fault of uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. I don't know, but watch how when he makes it, Jamel Dean undercuts it and is able to get his hands on the ball. At the end of the day, that's just not a risk Goff should have taken, in my opinion, so great job by Dean to get in position, but I mean, again, you got to make the catch also if you're Jamel Dean, right? Because Detroit was still able to put three points on the board. That wouldn't have happened. But again, uh, you know, definitely gets away with one. And this is what I do here on this channel with these film study things, right? A lot of people, you know, will kind of sometimes say, maybe I'll be more positive or more negative on a certain guy. And someone will say, but their stats were this. Well, yeah, but what I'm doing is watching the film. And I don't care if it's a drop interception or caught interception. You have no control over that as a player. You can only control putting it in harm's way or not putting it in harm's way. And he got away with putting one in harm's way there. That being said, he also made some incredible throws. I mean, you know, San Laporta was uh, just a force in this game. And like, you know, Tampa Bay, it's not like they were not paying attention to him. It's not like they were, you know, sometimes you see a tight end has a bunch of catches because the team just doesn't know how to play the tight end, right? And we've seen that happen even with Sam Laporta earlier in the year in certain scenarios. This time, though, I mean, Tampa Bay, they have an exotic look uh, where it's going to actually still be a four-man pressure, but they're going to drop two defensive linemen back into coverage. So kind of an interesting situation. But for Laporta, he's going one-on-one -on -one against Carlton Davis, who you could argue is Tampa Bay's best cover corner right here. And when this play begins, you're going to see, I think Davis actually does a pretty decent job at, you know, not giving up a big window. Goff is going to have to put this one perfectly on the money if they want to have a chance right here. And as you see, that's exactly what Goff does. I mean, that's just, you know, as the old expression goes, good offense beats good defense. That was good defense, but better offense by Jared Goff. Really, uh, you know, that, that was just, you know, as good as it gets right there by Detroit. And again, so Laporta uh, doing a good job of creating as big of a window as he could have in that scenario. And then there were also situations like this, which is so a bit of an exotic look again by Tampa Bay, right? No two coverages are ever the same. It's like snowflakes with them, right? They never want to make it the exact same thing. I've circled where Laporta is on this play. You So, okay, that's what's going on. And, you know, a lot of space over the middle, right? Because they're only having two guys going to be in coverage over the middle with four guys playing further deep. Watch how when this begins for Goff, he looks over at Laporta and it's KJ Britt who, you know, uh... Started the season as a backup for Tampa Bay, has since earned the starting job uh, for them. He's definitely overcommitting here, but he's overcommitting because he's so concerned about Laporta cutting up to the top of the screen. And that is something that I'm sure he saw on film because Detroit does like to have him cut up towards the top of the screen a decent amount on plays like this. So kind of a good job of, first off, you know, Laporta's showing what he's doing now, but right before this, he wasn't showing what he was doing. Uh, and good job by Detroit of kind of adding new wrinkles to their offense. They know it's the playoffs. Everyone's going to be focused on what you usually do. So you got to mix things up a little bit. Laporta cuts so well when he gets over the middle. He's wide open on that play, and they're able to, you know, it almost even looked like he got horse collared down on top of it, but no flag there. Uh, refs had some weird calls uh, on both teams in this one, but either way, that was definitely, uh, you know, a great play by Sam Laporta to pull something like that off. This drive was obviously huge to put them up late in the third quarter and was really just kind of classic Lions football, I thought. So this is going to be, uh, you know, uh, this is what the Lions do in a lot of ways is try and confuse opposing defenders where it's going to be essentially a goal line package here uh, on a third down and one. They're expecting a potential rush 
and to have, you know, one-on-one matchups across the board here for Tampa Bay, but also given the situation and given how much they want to put an emphasis on a potential run, uh, it's not necessarily like, okay, you just cover the guy you're supposed to cover no matter what. If someone, you know, if there's players in motion, you have to switch and you have to move off of that. So watch that guy right there. That is blocking tight end Brock Wright, who is usually not in the game to uh, catch passes, but obviously still is allowed to. Uh, let's see what he's going to do. And, you know, I have it as Lamonte David's supposed to cover him. But like I said, it's not exactly uh, the way that's supposed to be. They don't pay as much attention to that. Watch as when this play begins. I mean, again, it's not like he's selling as though he's blocking. He's just blocking here. Like, that's just what he's doing. And I don't think this play was first supposed to go to him. I think he's an option on this play, but I don't think like he's the guy who they're trying to run this play through or anything like that. This is just Goff reading the play, seeing the other guys aren't open, and you see nobody for Tampa Bay picks him up. He's able to get completely wide open on a play like that. Just great stuff. But also watch this move by Brock right there to, you know, uh, he got some wheels on him all of a sudden. Uh, good stuff by him to pick up a really key chunk play. Again, getting those chunk plays are huge. I thought, the, I thought the Lions did a pretty good job all game, actually, of being able to, you know, get positive plays. But it was getting the chunk plays that I thought was a bit of a bit of an issue at times. But getting this one was huge. Uh, and again, really good play call and all that just helped set it up. And then, of course, this one was also a huge play where what's going to happen is, you know, again, it's the situation itself. Forget about the play caller, you know, the, what actually happened. Fourth down and goal. This is just Dan Campbell stuff, right? And it's one of those things where you never really get credit when you go for it, but you always get the blame if you go for it and don't get it. But watch as they are going to get a great push. Uh, you know, we talked about the Frank Ragnow who was banged up on a play like that. Really just good. I mean, good you know, good job getting the uh, touchdown there. And hey, maybe they should probably should have gone, ran the ball on uh, second or third down. Might have been a smart idea as well, just given the way the situation went. At the same time, though, again, sometimes in big moments, coaches played a little bit cautious and they don't go for it on these fourth down situations, even one like this, which is a pretty obvious fourth down situation. But in the big moments, you have to go the other way. You have to make sure you stick to your guns and you have to go out and try and win the game. Don't just try not to lose it. That's exactly what Campbell did on this decision. And good job by the players to, you know, uh, to make it work out. And then this play was just huge. Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about the the draft pick. And I, you know, of course, me being a Tampa Bay fan who did not like the Gibbs uh, draft pick, of course, you would have a big play uh, against me here. I guess that's, uh, you know, a uh, fair play to Gibbs on that one. But here's the situation. It's uh, second down and two. Gibbs is going to get the handoff. And I mean, what a job by the offensive line to create, uh, a, you know, a hole for him to run through. And even with Tampa Bay, you know, only having a single safety deep, still get that kind of hole for Gibbs to get through. But this is where Gibbs makes the play, right? That was, okay, good, good job for sure. But one of the kind of underrated aspects of when you only play single safety deep against the run, obviously it's still the best way to play to run, but the kind of issue that can sometimes arise is, well, if you can get to the next level, you only have one guy to miss sometimes to get a touchdown. Watch as Gibbs makes a move and he's just so fast. That's Again, that's Antoine Winfield. That's all pro safety. Winfield tried to do what he's done all year and knock the ball out at the goal line, but uh, Gibbs did a good job of putting the ball you know, in the right hand and not losing it. Great stuff there by Gibbs to make something like that happen. And then this play was really kind of the play of the game, I thought. I mean, you're up seven. I mean, you're feeling good even if you have to give the ball back, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to put be, put yourself in that situation. You want to give yourself a chance to go up two scores, but it's third and 15. However, Detroit is doing exactly what they should be doing. So Tampa Bay has a corner, Jamel Dean, go down at this spot. You have Zion McCollum one-on-one on the outside against Amon Ross St. Brown. And really, I mean, that's just a mismatch. Like, that's just a huge mismatch. You have a backup corner who hasn't played well this season against Detroit's best receiver. So this is a good job by Detroit to get their best guy on Tampa Bay's worst guy. And again, sometimes teams overthink this. When there's an injury, they still say, oh, well, we want to do our thing. Like, no, Detroit was saying, oh, there's an injury. Let's exploit that, which is what they should be doing. Watch as Goff takes a snap. Great job by the offensive line, which did a great job all night to create pressure. And you see... It's not a wide open window, but on third and 15, it's about as good of a window as you typically get here. As you see, uh, it is actually, I'm not even sure if he got the first down right away when he caught it because he had to come back to get the football. However, he then runs forward and does pick up the first down, which again, fourth and one, they probably go for it. But still, great work there by, uh, you know, by Detroit to get themselves up two scores, which was really important. 
Tampa Bay did eventually score to make it a one-score game, but, you know, uh, Detroit was able to have that long drive that kind of iced it. So, huge win for them. Got to give them a lot of credit. Uh, and, hey, moving on to the conference championship. Incredible stuff by the Lions. That's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching.